Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. You might have heard that there are major issues in Ethiopia at the moment. Towards the end of last year, a civil war broke out in the country, something we reported on at the time. But since then, things only seem to have escalated. Violence continues and is seemingly spilling out into the wider region, with Sudan becoming increasingly involved. Add to that the major humanitarian crisis that's going on in the country, with millions of Ethiopians desperately needing food, while the government's allegedly burning crops and blocking aid in order to force the other side into starvation and concession. So in this video, we're going to give you an update on the situation in Ethiopia, how the conflict is rumbling on, and the horrific human consequences of what seems to be an unwinnable war. Before we do though, this is a new channel, so odds are you haven't hit the subscribe button yet. If you want more global content from us, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you can be notified when we post. Also, topics like this always get demonetized, so if you want to help us make content free from censorship, then check out our Patreon or donate through PayPal. Thanks for your support. So, to give you a very brief overview, on November 4th last year, the federal government of Ethiopia, led by Abe Ahmed, started a war against the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, who previously held power in the federal government and now represents the northern Tigray region. If you want a more detailed rundown, you should watch our video on it. Anyway, we ended the last video by saying that whoever you thought was in the right, Abe or the TPLF, this was going to end badly, and we gave three reasons. One, it's an unwinnable war. Two, it's likely to stoke inter-ethnic tensions within Ethiopia. And three, it was likely to spill over into an international conflict involving other countries in the region. Also, as we mentioned in the last video, internet and media access has been cut off from most of Tigray since early November, so no one's 100% sure of what's going on. Nonetheless, all three of these things seem to be coming true. So let's start with the first one. The war is essentially unwinnable because the Tigrayans largely support the TPLF, and the TPLF has an army of about 250,000 people. Even if the Ethiopian federal forces successfully killed all 250,000 TPLF members, you'd just have a permanently resentful Tigrayan population, who would most likely never accept the federal government as legitimate. In essence, war with the TPLF means war with the entire Tigrayan region. Now, on November 28th, Abi declared victory after federal forces captured the capital of Tigray. But this doesn't really mean anything, because the fighting has continued since then. While federal forces have now captured all major towns and cities in Tigray, it's thought that most of the TPLF are still in hiding in rural Tigray. Arby also claimed that no civilians have been killed in the fighting, but this seems to be a flat-out lie. There have been numerous reports of civilian killings and inter-ethnic massacres, and the UN has reported federal artillery shelling on civilian areas. Perhaps most worrying is the degree of starvation in the region. Crop yields this season have suffered from locust plagues, and things seem to have only been made worse by the war. According to the Famine Early Warning Systems Network, run by the US government, parts of central and eastern Tigray are one step away from famine, as is much of the rest of the country, although often to a lesser extent than Tigray. Aid agencies estimate that as many as 4.5 million Tigrayans need aid, out of a population of 7 million. Even more worryingly though, there are reports that the federal government is actively blocking aid. There are also satellite images of burnt crops that have been seen by experts, with some alleging the government started the fires themselves. On top of that, last month, four UN staff members were shot at and detained for entering areas where a government official said they were not supposed to go. And that's despite there being an agreement signed between the federal government and the UN, saying that aid workers were allowed to travel throughout the country unhindered. Even worse, six aid workers have been killed so far. Mark Lowcock, the UN's humanitarian chief, speaking to The Economist, said that for more than two months there's been essentially no access to Degray. There are 450 tons of supplies that we've been trying to get in that are stuck. Obviously, Arby denies this and blames the TPLF, but it would make sense, because as we mentioned earlier, war with the TPLF sort of entails war with the entirety of the region. 
It's also suspicious that RB is resisting attempts for international mediation, calling the war an internal affair. This, by the way, just isn't true, as we'll get to in a moment. So the long and short of it is, the war's looking increasingly unwinnable, and civilians are the ones paying the price. On to stoking interethnic tensions, as we explained in our previous video, Ethiopia's population is composed of 10 different ethnic groups, who occasionally fight with each other, and the fighting has been getting worse during this period of political instability. In and around Tigray, there have been reports of interethnic massacres all over the place. It's hard to say who's killing who in these massacres, because obviously there's no journalistic access to the region, but it seems to be a combination of federal forces, ethnic Amhara militias, Eritrean troops, and the TPLF. There have also been reports of interethnic violence in Western Ethiopia, where a security vacuum has opened up because most of the federal forces are in Tigray, leading to this region not getting any attention and seemingly descending into chaos. Finally, let's talk about how this is turning into an international conflict. Because, as we just mentioned, Eritrean forces are involved in the fighting. Arbi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 for ending the Ethiopia-Eritrea border conflict. In fact, he's now mates with the Eritrean president. Arbi denies that Eritrean forces are involved in the conflict, but this seems to be untrue, given that both the Mekele interim mayor and the Ethiopian military commander have confirmed reports of Eritrean troops fighting alongside federal forces. Eritrean forces have reportedly also raided four UN refugee camps in Tigray, which host over 100,000 Eritrean refugees. The UN has now regained control of two of them, but the other two, which house over 35,000 refugees, remain inaccessible. Around 500,000 Eritreans have fled to Ethiopia over the last two decades, often to avoid conscription which has put the country under some real demographic pressure, and there are now reports that refugees are being forcibly repatriated back to Eritrea. There are even some reports of Somali troops trained in Eritrea being involved in the conflict. The conflict has also put pressure on Sudan's relationship with Ethiopia. The relationship was already strained thanks to Abiy's new alliance with Eritrea and the ongoing issues related to Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam, which is likely to affect Sudan's water supply. And now, on top of that, 60,000 Ethiopians have fled to Sudan, at a rate of 500 people a day. In December, Ethiopia and Sudan even started fighting over the disputed Al Fashka region, which is 250 square kilometers in size, with 600,000 acres of fertile land. Basically, according to colonial maps, Al Fashka is part of Sudan, but Ethiopian farmers have been living there happily for years. Ethiopia claims that Sudan took advantage of the federal government's preoccupation in Tigray to try and assert itself in the region, but Sudan claims that Ethiopian fighters fired on Sudanese troops first. Who started this isn't really the point, it's a symptom of worsening relations between Ethiopia and Sudan, and this is worrying because, well, it just means more war. This is why we said that Abiy's claim that this was an internal affair just isn't really true. At least three countries, Ethiopia, Eritrea and Sudan, are all involved by this point. In summary, this is an unwinnable war, and it will only make inter-ethnic tensions worse in Ethiopia. And it will probably spill out into an international conflict, if it hasn't already. In terms of an international response, the EU has cut off 88 million euros of budget support until aid agencies are given access to Tigray. Britain's Dominic Raab, in a meeting with Arby on Friday, warned that Ethiopia's reputation might be tarnished by the fighting. And Antony Blinken, Biden's nominee for Secretary of State, has said that the US needs to be more involved with the conflict. So who knows where things go from here? Things are looking increasingly bleak for those within Ethiopia, and we can only hope that future actions taken to ensure that aid gets to those who need it, and food shortages and starvation are limited as far as possible. Ultimately though, these fractures emerging in the region may continue to cause problems way beyond the point when food starts entering the region. With this violence stoking further ethnic tensions in the country and embroiling other countries into the issue, there's certainly a difficult time ahead for the country and the region. 
If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel for updates on this topic and others. Also, if you're interested in this topic specifically, then check out the full video we made on Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam, which, as we mentioned, could result in more tension going forward. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.